Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be continuing every exam question that has ever been asked, and I'm going to be looking at congruency in this one, which is all to do with shapes being exactly the same as each other. Now, as I always say, if you do want to use this document, it is linked in the description, and it's fully hyperlinked, which means you can jump around to all of the different bits using like the buttons down here as well. So this is a non-calculator one, and it just says that the diagram shows four triangles, and it says two of these triangles are congruent, which means they're exactly the same as each other write down the letters of these two triangles. Well, there's something that's gonna be helpful for this. And one of the things is to try and work out what all of the angles are, because they're gonna be congruent if the side 10 centimeters or the side eight centimeters is between the same two angles in two of the triangles. So 55 and 45, they add up to 100, which means this other angle here must be 80, which means I can also say down here that this one must be 55. And I actually don't have enough information about these ones. But what you can see in this first triangle is that the 10 is opposite the 80, but here the 10 is not opposite the 80. So these two definitely aren't the same as each other. And in this triangle, you can see that the 10 is opposite the 80. So these are actually gonna be the congruent ones. Here, the 10 is opposite the 55. So the two which are congruent in this case are going to be triangle A and triangle D. Those are the ones that are exactly the same as each other. And then we've got the answers A and D. So we're going to try and prove here it says that ABCD is a quadrilateral. AB is equal to CD and angle ABC is equal to angle BCD. And we're going to try and prove that AC is equal to BD. So I'm just going to draw on those lines AC and then the line BD. And we're going to actually think that this is going to be a congruency question. It doesn't say that it's a congruency question, but it is going to be one here. So first of all, we're going to prove that the triangles are congruent, and then we'll prove that those are the same as each other. So I'm going to begin by saying that AB is equal to CD, and that was given in the question. And that is referring to a side, okay? They've also told us that angle ABC is equal to angle BCD, and that was also given in the question. So that means that they've got an angle that is the same as each other. And then the last part is that they share the same side BC. And so this is the same side. So I'm just gonna write that it's the same side. And that gives us our side rule that we've got here. So the things that I've just discussed is that AB is equal to CD. Those are the same sides. Then I have the angle and then I have a shared side here. So it goes side, angle, side. So by congruency, we can say that triangle A, B, C and B, C, D are congruent. And after we say that it's congruent, we can say that they are congruent by side, angle, side, and the examiner will know what that means for that one. So because they are congruent, AC must be equal to BC. Because they are congruent, AC equals BD, because they are the corresponding sides. They're kind of like the third side of each of those triangles. A bit difficult to sort of see how these things are, um, but we've said that the triangles are um, uh, congruent to each other. The reason was SAS, and so that tells us that AC is equal to BD. Now this is, I think, the last question in the summer 2018 paper 3H, and it's a little bit trickier because there just seems to be a lot more information going on in this diagram. It just says that ABCD is a parallelogram, so ABCD is a parallelogram, ABP and QDC are straight lines, and on the diagram they've shown that ADP and CBQ are 90 degrees and that's given to us. So we're going to try and prove that the triangle ADP, which is this one, is congruent to triangle CBQ. So I think the first thing that I've probably noticed in this one, well maybe not necessarily the first thing, but that the angle PAD, this angle here, is equal to another one. Angle PAD is equal to this one that we have down here, and I'm going to call that one angle BCQ angle B, C, Q. And the reason that they are equal to each other is because they are opposite angles in a parallelogram. Remember we said that the shape uh, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Now the next thing that we can see is that A, D is equal to B, C. So this line that we have here 
is equal to this line that we've got here. And that's because they are opposite sides in a parallelogram. So AD is equal to BC. And that's because opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal. So a lot of writing to do. And then the third thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to show that there's another angle that is equal. And it's this angle here. They've told us that this is a right angle and this is a right angle. So I'm going to say that angle ADP a, D, P is equal to angle C, B, Q, which is equal to 90 degrees, and that was given in the question. So by the A, S, A rule, they are congruent. And I'll just explain what I mean by A, S, A. Because we have an angle that is the same, then we have a side that is the same, and then we have another angle is, that is the same. We have that it is an angle, a side, and an angle in that order as you look at the diagram. So those two triangles must be equivalent to each other. Now part B, this was the very last question in the exam paper. It says explain why AQ is parallel to PC. Well, first of all, we're looking at this one wanting to be parallel to this one. And it's to do with the fact that we've got a large parallelogram here. We just need to prove that it is a large parallelogram. First of all, AP must be equal to QC. This part, AP, must be equal to QC because we've just proven that this triangle and this triangle are congruent. So the reason that they are equal to each other is because of congruent triangles. Now the next thing, if they are congruent triangles, and we can also say that A, sorry, if the AP is equal to QC and AP and QC are parallel because that's shown on the diagram, then we know something. These two facts tell us that because they are equal and parallel, this means that APCQ is a parallelogram. And because that shape is a parallelogram, which we've now proven, we can say as AQ and PQ, oh sorry, not PQ, as AQ and PC, are opposite, they are parallel because we know that opposite sides in a, parallel, a parallelogram are parallel. So it's a very, very wordy question and I think this one is pretty difficult to answer because it's this kind of proof element of stuff. So to show that these were parallel, we proved that these were the same because they were from congruent triangles and we were told in the question that they were parallel. Any quadrilateral that has opposite sides which are equal and parallel must be a parallelogram. And so pretty difficult to read through this proof, but we have got the correct bit here according to my working. Okay, and then we've probably got what I think is maybe the hardest question that we have on this, and it pops up again when I look at circle theorems. So if you haven't done circle theorems, you might not be able to do this one just yet. And it says we've got these points in a circle, and it says AEC and DEB are straight lines. Angle AED is an equilateral triangle. So that's an important one. That means this angle here is 60, this angle is 60, and this angle is 60. And it wants us to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB. So we're looking at ABC, that kind of long, thin triangle there, and DBC, or DCB, looking at this triangle. So we want these two triangles to be proven that they are congruent to each other. So I think one of the first things that we can just say is that BC is equal to BC because it is the same side. And we might come back to that later on to show why this has worked. And the other thing I want to write down, which I've put on the diagram, is that angle DAE is equal to angle AED, which is equal to angle EDA, which is equal to 60 degrees because it is an equilateral triangle. Now I'm going to try and do some other things, and these are all the reason for this is that the angles in the same segment are equal. So the angles in a same segment, angles in the same segment are equal. So this tells me a few different things. Now if I draw the first segment being this DC line that we've got here, it tells me that this angle that we have here must be this angle that we have. So from that I can say that angle DAC is equal to angle DBC 
and both of those are 60 degrees. So I can now say that that is 60 degrees. Now I'm going to be looking at a different line. I'm going to switch to a different color. I'm going to go to, say, this purple that I've got here. I'm now going to look at the AB line. If I look at this line that I have here, I can see that this angle must be the same as this angle because they are angles in the same segment again. So that must mean that this is 60 degrees. So this now tells me that angle ADB is equal to angle ACB, which is equal to 60 degrees. And then the last one that I'm going to have a look at is the AD line. So I'm going to do this in a green color. OK, so this AD line that we have here, we have two triangles. So this angle at the top and this angle are going to be equal to each other. These are going to be equal and I'm going to call these angles X. So I'm now going to say that angle uh, ACD, ACD is equal to angle ABD which is equal to x because of the same segment. So what we now therefore can say is this. Therefore, angle DCB, which is this one, DCB, is equal to angle ABC, which is equal to x plus 60. So we can actually say that these are congruent because what we have now got is a same side, we have a same angle at this point, we now have a same side. So let's just highlight the ones that we've got. We have got a same side, we then have a same angle here and here, and we also have one final same angle, which is this one and this one. So it's a bit difficult to tell because of all that overlapping that we've got. So I'm going to get rid of some of that highlighting that I had. And the last thing that we have for these angles is that angle ACB is equal to angle ACB is DBC, which is 60 degrees. And that is the case of A. So we have got angle, side, angle. We've got two angles with a side enclosed. So by ASA the triangles are congruent. Now, in my opinion, this is one of the hardest topics that there is because it's really hard to see all of these things, how they come together using these different rules. Um, but that's actually how this one goes. Pretty difficult kind of stuff. I think that's all of the questions that I've got here on congruency. Um, you can see this is very difficult to break down this, so hopefully this video will be good for you. In the next videos, I'm going to be looking at some things to do with angles. I'll do triangles and parallel lines, and then I'll probably split these ones up because there are tons of questions on circle theorems for this.